We're wrapping things up here, of course, at the Santon Convention Center. It's the 10th BRICS Summit Cohesion. But collaboration and prosperity in the fourth industrial revolution, key themes and key elements that seem to be coming out of this summit as well. I'm joined this time around by Professor Anil Suklal, who is, of course, the, uh, South, Af or the ambassador, South African ambassador to BRICS as well. Probably the busiest man at the summit, if you want to call it that as well. Prof, thank you so much for the time. I suppose you, you must be happy at this point that yes. we've gotten to a successful time in a, and towards the end of it, it becomes a, a relief that it's almost <laughs> done. But key yes. messages to have come out of this uh, yes. is, is a lot about coherence. How much of that message do you think we can follow through on? Well, I think that was the underlying theme that we as South Africa, being in the presidency, wanted to achieve. We, being the 10th BRICS Summit, we wanted to ensure that we deepened our cooperation and we focused on the need for us to work together for common win-win uh, benefit. And that's why the key word in the theme is inclusive growth and shared prosperity. Yeah. We need to grow, but grow together. We need to benefit from uh, growth in the global environment and we need to ensure that the growth is not skewed, that all in the global community has have a place and to benefit from, from global growth and development. Yeah. And therefore we speak of shared prosperity. And we are doing it within the context of new technologies underlined by the fourth industrial revolution. So I think this was echoed throughout the summit, embraced by all of the BRICS leaders, and the key outcomes that South Africa sought to achieve during its presidency that are critical for South Africa and for the BRICS have all been achieved. They are all echoed within the Johannesburg Declaration. We wanted to deepen cooperation in global peacekeeping. That was embraced by all of the countries. Mm. We wanted to create a forum for women, a woman track, yep. and that's been embraced by all. And it's an important achievement because in the 10 years of cooperation, we didn't have a dedicated track yes. that will focus on issues around women and women empowerment. And thirdly, we wanted to create a vaccine research center and that has been endorsed by all of the BRICS countries and President Ramaphosa has clearly stated that South Africa will be very keen to host this so we we are going to house that research center here in South Africa yeah. and again you have joint collaboration all of the BRICS countries are very strong in the health pharmaceutical sector both uh, human health and animal health and <coughs> Equally important is the underlying theme of the fourth industrial revolution. We have agreed to create a platform for the fourth industrial revolution, a BRICS cooperation platform, sure. where we can all work together to address the challenges and harness the tremendous opportunities that this new industrial revolution provides. That shared prosperity, though, seems to be shared now across Africa. It's not well, just the BRICS nations. Yes. Across Africa and the global south, I might add, because you, as you probably know, this is the second time we have the privilege of hosting the BRICS summit. Yes. We did so in 2013. And in 2013, we innovated the idea of having BRICS reach out to the rest of the world yeah. when we invited African leaders. But this time we had an even larger presence. We had 27 countries in the room today, 21 at the level of heads of state. The majority from Africa, including our own SADC region, and we had very influential and powerful leaders from the Global South. Pres the President of Turkey in his capacity as Chair of the o Organization of Islamic Cooperation, President of Argentina, in chair, uh, chair currently of the G20 and president of Jamaica as chair of the Caribbean community. So it was a m coming together and meeting of minds of the global south with the BRICS leaders. Yeah. Message to sort of take forward. What, what would that be for you? Well, I think the very important message that has come through is the need for deepened cooperation the interconnectedness of all of us, that we can't function in isolation and individually, we need each other more so ever, and that we need to defend multilateralism mm. uh, that is under siege at the present time, and that we need to defend the World Trading Organization, given unilateral trading measures that's being branded about at the present time, that's going to be harmful to the global trade regime and hurt all of us. So the key message is we need to work together to protect and strengthen multilateralism to 
fight against protectionism and uni unilateral measures. Do you think we've done enough to, to create a cohesive enough group to fight against uh, the current trade wars that are sort of happening, sending a clear message to the rest there of the world? There was a very, very strong and clear message from all 27 countries, not just the BRICS leaders, the African leaders and the Global South leaders. They all spoke in unison in one voice that we will st uh, fight protectionism, we will fight unilateral measures and we will work together to strengthen multilateralism and to strengthen the global trading regime. Professor, I really appreciate your time there. Professor Anil uh, Suglal, rather there, who is the South African ambassador to BRICS as well. One of the busiest men around. We are concluding. It is the third day of the BRICS summit as well here at the Santin Convention Center.